waking up at the crack of dawn. To go to the dry tortugas. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. The Yankee Freedom. Here, just before sun, before sunrise. And here we are, departing. Very excited to finally visit this bucket list destination. But very sad to see all those boats damaged or sunk by Hurricane Irma. Yeah, although life on the island seems back to normal, not everything is. We see some more damaged boats here by Wisteria Island, also known as Christmas Tree Island because of all the Casuarina pine trees. And the cruise ship has arrived at Mallory Square, deserted this early in the morning. There is a Sunset Island. By the way, you can also make the trek to the Dry Tortugas by seaplane. And there it goes. We discovered that one of the best places to be actually is the bow of the boat. Even if it gets a little bouncy, the, the ocean breeze is fantastic. Eventually, it gets too choppy and they close down the bow, and we have to either stay inside or sit by the stern, which leads to a little bit of seasickness. Eventually, we get up, we prefer to get a little wet rather than getting seasick of course. Right here, at the bottom floor by the stern, is where they are bringing all the seasick people, because it is much less bouncy back here. But we're getting pretty wet. There's our destination in the distance. There's East Key, the smallest of the islands, and Middle Key, which seasonally disappears during high tide. Finally, Hospital Key. Can you believe they had a hospital there? And the Loggerhead Lighthouse. The Garden Key Lighthouse on Fort Jefferson. Let's begin our tour of the fort by entering through the Sally Port, which was designed so attackers would be trapped by a second door and shut through small windows called loopholes. The granite rails on the floor were designed to guide carriage wheels. Here's a part of the cistern and rainwater collection system. This is what remains of the soldiers' barracks building, at the foundation. Construction of the barracks was never actually finished because they were continually being damaged by hurricanes.
let's go up, one of the spiral staircases, which were constructed with a uh, pre-cut granite from Vermont. The narrow steps were designed to limit the number of attackers that would be able to ascend at one time. From the top we see Bush Key, which sometimes is a peninsula like today and sometimes it becomes an island, depending on the ocean erosion, you know. This here is the North Beach uh, swimming area, but I was told it was actually too choppy to go snorkeling. Here's a rare 10-inch parrot rifle, and by the way, one of the reasons this fort is preserved so well is because it has never actually seen any real battle. Here's a 15-inch Rudman. And that's what's left of the officers' quarters. And the furnace. Let's go back down. The hotshot furnace down there was used to heat up cannonballs so they would be more effective against wooden ships. That was of course before the invention of explosive artillery shells. This is the large parade magazine that was never f finished either, uh, nor used, designed to keep powder dry and safe, but the design was vulnerable to modern artillery, so they stored the gunpowder elsewhere. Here's a closer look at the hot shot furnace, and the ruins of the officers' quarters. This was supposed to be the bakery? Well, according to the soldiers and the prisoners, the food here was awful, really bad. The bread was a mixture of flour, bugs, sticks and dirt, and the meat was usually rotten. Life must have really sucked here. prison. The dungeon. The fort also served as a prison during and after the Civil War, and this is uh, one of the areas of the fort where uh, one Dr. Samuel Mudd was imprisoned. He was accused of conspiring to assassinate President Lincoln. This here is the South Beach area, where I'm going to attempt to do some snorkeling. Well, this side here is called South Beach and this is the part that he recommended, the, the guide, because it is very choppy on the other side, you know, the weather is not exactly optimal and actually a little chilly. The water is cold. So I'm testing this new mask I got that has a GoPro style camera mount. It's one of these full face masks, you know, the modern style, but it is new, so the inside is getting all fogged. That combined with the low visibility and I cannot see anything. It is supposed to be much better close to the moat wall, but I didn't know that at the time. It is also supposed to be better as well at the North Beach, but as I said, it is too choppy. Okay, I give up. That was an epic fail. By the way, the island is full of hermit crabs. Well, the beach wasn't great, I must say. Mm. 
Let's go have lunch. Lunch on the ship uh, consists of tuna salad, uh, sandwiches, uh, potato salad and cookies, you know, buffet, buffet style. You make your own sandwiches. And I was so hungry I forgot to take out the camera. This here to the left is the campground where you would stay if you chose to spend the night. We walk on top of the moat wall, you know, walking off our lunch, it's a thing. Now we're walking towards Bush Key, also called Hog Key in the past because th this is where they used to raise hogs to feed the prisoners. And take a look at the color on that water, <laughs> amazing. North Beach. Hey, here we go. Yeah, that was nothing. Eventually a large wave came and we got soaked. That bird looks kind of like a pterodactyl, doesn't it? Don't worry, I'm not gonna say fly pelican. Oh, I did. <laughs> Look how choppy it is on this side of the island. Okay, we just got soaked. <laughs> okay, we're getting soaked. Let's get out of here. Whoa, I think the high tide is coming. The camera got wet too. It's a very disorganized. Uh, it is almost time to depart from Fort Jefferson here on a two and a half hour ride back to Key West. Structural damage, perhaps? Well, that was uh, Fort Jefferson and the Dry Tortugas National Park here. We're heading back to the boat because I believe they did. Bar, you know, alcohol is open, so. After such an strenuous day here, hiking and and swimming. There it is. Let's go to the boat. Well, salut. We spend our last moments here in the Dry Tortugas, hanging out on the bow of the boat, sipping cheap wine with this marvelous view. And the seaplane is back.
doesn't he look like Riley from Sailing La Vagabond? If you think I'm obsessed with that plane, you're probably right. I love planes, particularly seaplanes. Actually, I love all modes of transportation, really, but uh, I would have loved being a pilot. Uh, perhaps there's still time, it's never too late. we go. On the way back we discovered that the wine is much better than Dramamine for seasickness. Maybe that's why sailors have a reputation, you know, that stereotype of being drunks. The top half of the cruise ship can already be seen on the horizon. Proof that the Earth is round. And the cruise ship is departing, as usual, right before the sunset celebrations. And there goes one of the sunset cruises. If you have enjoyed traveling with us, and make sure you are subscribed and check out my other videos. Also, share it with your friends, spread the word and leave me a comment. Now, if you really, really liked it, you have a chance to show your support at patreon.com slash travelingrobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.